Hello friends. So uh, this week so far we have been discussing about the uh, various aspects related to the biological treatment of wastewater, how the microorganism uh, attack the organic compound for their energy or carbon uh, needs and then how they grow. So all the basic concepts we discussed in this uh, lecture we are going to talk about one of the most popular unit which are typically like conventionally used across the world in the uh, sewage treatment plants is activated sludge process and that is what we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So uh, what is activated sludge process or ASP which is commonly known as ASP acronym. So this is actually the as we are saying it is the most conventional unit which works on a aerobic uh, like aerobic principles of uh, wastewater treatment. So, the organic matter present in the water or the BOD you can say present in the water is actually degraded or reduced by the principle of aerobic degradation or aerobic decomposition in a system in a reactor or in a unit which typically uh, supplies oxygen because it is aerobic system. So, it ensures the supply of oxygen keep the content more or less in the mixed state and uh, allows bacteria to grow in the suspension. So, this is a suspended growth system. Okay. The typical activated sludge process is actually a suspended growth system. So, uh, activated sludge process typically consists of two separate chambers or two separate tanks we can call that. So, there has to be a aeration tank okay, which is where the organic matter is stabilized or decomposed by the action of bacteria under aeration. And then there is a secondary sedimentation tank which is also known as secondary settling tank or secondary clarifier where the biological cell mass is separated from the effluent uh, which is coming from the aeration tank and actually the sludge is settled down at the bottom while effluent crosses uh, from the top find its way from the top. So, they, this is essentially a separation process where the solids are separated from the mixed solid liquid state. The aeration and biomass recycling is generally necessary for activated sludge process. Okay. So, aeration conditions are achieved means uh, for purpose of providing aeration or supplying aeration there are two ways either uh, diffused aerators are used or mechanical aerators are used. So, diffused aerators provide the like if you have this tank and you have put in a diffuser here. So, you pump air from here and then the air is released from the bottom and is actually your waste water is here in this tank. So, air bubbles finds its way and that way air keeps in the mixed condition in this chamber. So, that is the diffused aerator while mechanical aerators uh, are provided usually at the surface of the water. So, if you have aeration tank you provide a basically device with mechan paddles and all that and allow it to mix. So, as this rigorously mixes it actually ensures the supply of oxygen there. So, this could be either floating or with the fixed support. Now, the typical design of activated sludge processes are based on the BOD loading, food to microorganism ratio, sludge A's and the aeration period. So, for how long we need to aerate, for how long we need to retain sludge in the system what has to be the appropriate food to microorganism ratio as we are discussing that is an important parameter, what is uh, what has to be the organic loading or BOD loading in the system. So, all these things are considered while conceptualizing or designing the activated sludge systems. So, in a nutshell what we are discussing so far we will have a aeration tank. Now, this aeration tank could be either of the diffuse type like this one is the diffuse type aeration. So, we cannot see anything on the top just seeing the bubbles coming out. So, the content remains in the mixed state and significant air supply is ensured here. 
So, this is the kind of diffused aerator system or we can go for the mechanical aerators as we are discussing which are kind of devices put in the pedal and then they rotate here frequently ensuring the supply of oxygen in the water. So, these are kind of mechanical aerators, these are diffused aerators. So, we will have a aeration tank which would have either of these two mechanisms typically either diffused aerators or mechanical aerators and then the water traditionally come to this or this any of the route which is being followed. So, water will uh, the water means the effluent from the primary sedimentation. So, primary settling has already taken place and then the uh, flow is connected to either of these two systems either a diffused aerator or mechanical aerator and from here onwards it is directed to a secondary settling tank or secondary clarifier or secondary sedimentation. So, what happens in a tank like this the mixed liquor here or mixed liquid is transferred here and then it allows uh, this thing to get settled and that is eventually what happens that the overflow from the top of the water is collected in a channel while the sludge from bottom is taken out. So, that is what typically happens in an activated sludge process. If we see the more conceptual diagram that way, so we will have uh, influent sewage after primary sedimentation coming into an aerator system and uh, then there is an aeration tank where the mixing aeration and oxygen supplies takes place. It goes to a clarifier, from clarifier the effluent means this is your treated water or treated sewage. Treated means treated from this unit not entirely treated. So, that way you can say it uh, may be effluent instead of the treated sewage. So, this is actually the effluent. This is your influent. So, here the water goes through the influent and this sludge settled sludge is collected. Out of the settled sludge part of sludge is wasted which is actually excess sludge while the part of sludge which typically uh, like some uh, somewhere between 25 to 50 percent around that of the sludge is again recycled back to the aeration tank aeration system. Okay. So, that is the return sludge component. Okay. This recycling is uh, advantageous in terms of uh, this is actually advantageous in terms of managing the required amount of biomass in the system. Okay. So, as we were discussing the difference between the suspended and attached growth system one of the major differences which we were discussing in the last lecture as well that the attached growth system are uh, because the microbial growth or microbial growth is attached to a media the uh, biofilm which is formed is attached to something. So, the water flows through that and the biomass retains in the system. Whereas, in suspended growth system because the microbial mass is also suspended in the water is actually in the mixed with the water. So, when water flows from here it actually takes those suspended mass as well the uh, which typically we refer as say volatile suspended solids. So, it takes the volatile suspended solids or biomass also along with it which eventually goes to the clarifier. Now, if we do not recycle, so lot of biomass which is being produced is actually leaving the system and there would not be sufficient biomass left here. So, in order to ensure the significant concentration of biomass in the system whatsoever comes here part of that is recycled where the excess sludge is just wastage. So, that is what the uh, conceptual process that takes place in an activated sludge system. Now, uh, there are certain things based on which we design or we conceptualize the activated sludge process certain parameters. So, uh, one of the important parameters is organic loading rate or BOD loading. So, how much BOD is being loaded or how much organic matter is being loaded or is being supplied to the activated sludge process. Okay. 
So, the volumetric loading rate, uh, there are two types of such loading, organ organic loading we can say. So, one is the volumetric organic loading rate, where we quantify the amount of BOD applied or kg of the BOD applied per unit volume of the reactor. So, for in a unit volume of the reactor, how much BOD is being fed? Now, unit volume of the reactor here we consider the volume of aeration tank only. In because there is an inherent assumption in activated sludge process that the reaction or the degradation process takes place only in the aeration tank because that is where we are feeding in oxygen that is where we are providing adequate environment for the reaction. The role of the secondary clarifier or secondary settling tank is just to separate the solids from the liquid and no reaction, no degradation, nothing happens other than the separation process in the secondary sedimentation tank. That is a basic assumption which is taken in the activated sludge process. So, in light of that assumption, whenever we calculate such loading and all that, we consider the volume of aeration tank only because that is where the degradation or decomposition is taking place. It is not taking place in the secondary sedimentation tank. So, we do not consider the volume of secondary sedimentation tank for our calculation or design purpose. So, that is why when we are talking about the organic loading rate or volumetric organic loading rate, we do not include the uh, volume of the uh, secondary sedimentation tank and we do not include the return sludge flow also. Okay. So, what primarily we include is that how much inflow is coming okay, in the in your activated sludge process. So, if this is my aeration tank this is my secondary settling tank, there is basically recycling. So, we do not consider this as an inflow because ultimately you, you can see that this entire thing is just one unit, this is what we refer as ASP. So, for this one particular unit, what is the inflow of the BOD? That is what we considered per unit volume of the reactor and volume of the reactor we considered this only. Okay. So, that is what is uh, typically how it is considered. Then there is another form of organic loading rate uh, which is uh, your F food to microorganism ratio that means how much BOD or how much organic matter is applied per unit of the mixed liquor volatile suspended solids or per unit uh, of the biomass available. This mixed liquor volatile suspended solids which is typically referred as MLVSS. So, there are uh, certain terms which are frequently used in here. Okay. So, uh, those terms include there is we already have talked about while talking about the parameter TSS and VSS which is total suspended solid and volatile suspended solids. We also use uh, MLSS which indicates the mixed liquor suspended solids. So, what is the suspended solids in the mixed liquor or mixed liquid. So, in aeration tank when there is a mixing happens, so we say that it is a suspended growth process. So, bacteria and water and organic matter everything is remains in the mixed state suspension state. So, when we take this water as it is or a unit volume of this water and try to monitor the solids in this, we call that mixed liquor suspended solids. There is another term which is MLVSS, mixed liquor or mixed liquid, uh, either way it is some, uh, some references it is pronounced as mixed liquid, some references it is pronounced as mixed liquor. So, uh, the MLVSS is another term which is mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. So, uh, this is the fraction uh, like this here you can, it does not say total suspended solid, but it essentially means that mixed liquor suspended solid or mixed liquor total suspended solids, whereas this is the volatile part of the suspended solids. Now, what these solids means in terms of activated sludge process? So, uh, as we were just discussing that the inflow to the activated sludge process is after primary clarifier or after primary settling tank. So, majority of the inorganic solids, majority of the sealed clay or those kind of uh, uh, suspended materials has already been removed in the primary sedimentation scale. So, the primary settling has already removed majority of the inert or inorganic solids and in a suspended form whatsoever is there in the 
activated sludge process is primarily bacteria. So, there is some initial seed is provided anyway and then there is a growth of microorganism that takes place and these microorganisms are also suspended solids because they cannot get dissolved in the water, they remain in the suspension and that is why we call it suspended growth systems. So, since they remain in the suspension, these microorganisms are part of a solid matrix for the water and so, uh, the when we measure or when we monitor the solids in a activated sludge mixed liquid or mixed liquor system, we what we get predominantly is the microbial uh, biomass. So, that is why this uh, VSS we can call that or even MLSS or MLVSS is basically considered as the indicator or measurement of biomass present in the system because we have already removed other suspended solids already. So, whatsoever present in the system is predominantly microorganisms. Now, MLSS which is uh, even if there is let us say some solids left, uh, some inorganic or inert solid left that will come in the MLSS, but if we measure MLVSS basically. So, because the nature of the microorganisms they are made uh, uh, is volatile. So, they once you heat that water at 550, uh, the even the microorganisms are going to get vaporized. So, what MLVSS gives is the more precise estimation of the microorganisms considering that even if there are some inert solids or suspended materials left in the system, they will accounted in MLSS, but not in MLVSS because on the volatile part we have already removed the suspended organic uh, or inorganic uh, materials in the primary settling tank and the volatile materials that are left are primarily the microorganism. So, this MLVSS that way is considered as a measurement of microorganisms or measurement of biomass or bacteria present in the system. So, the food to microorganism ratio is essentially the amount of BOD applied or amount of organic matter inflow coming into the system per unit MLVSS per day. So, in a day for the unit amount of microorganisms, what is food to microorganism ratio? M stands for microorganism that is biomass which is represented by MLVSS here and F is the food which is represented by BOD. So, the ratio of BOD to MLVSS in a day is basically the F by M ratio. Then uh, there is volumetric organic loading rate from here we can get is actually the amount of BOD applied. So, how much BOD is applied? If Q is the discharge, so Q into the uh, so Q into the BOD will be the mass of BOD. Okay, and of course, if BOD is in milligram per liter, so we can uh, multiply it with 10 to the power minus 3 to get milligram per meter cube as typically this is let us say in meter cube per day and this is uh, in milligram per liter. So, if you multiply it with 10 to the power minus 3, so this total becomes actually in the milligram per meter cube okay. and that way uh, you can see that meter cube gets cancelled and it eventually becomes milligram per day. And, uh, if you multiply it with the volume of the reactor, so you are multiplying that way. So, that is giving you the volumetric organic loading rate over here. Similarly, F by M ratio can be uh, obtained as Q into BOD into 10 to the power minus 3, that means the total organic load coming in into the volume and MLVSS. So, volume of reactor and if you multiply with the concentration. So, this will give you the mass of the microorganisms or biomass present in the system and this is mass of the uh, food coming into the system. So, this ratio gives food to microorganism ratio that way. Now, there are a uh, few other terms solid retention time which is the SRT. This refers to the duration uh, for which the solids which primarily sludge or microbial mass we are talking about stays in the aeration tank. So, this SRT typically is actually the kg of the uh, mixed liquor total suspended solids in the aeration tank. So, how much uh, 
total solids present in the tank at any given point of time or in a day and uh, kg of the total solids wastage per day plus kg of the total solids lost in the effluent. So, if you quickly see again this is your aeration tank, this is your secondary settling tank, this is the amount of recycling. So, uh, if you consider this as a your activated sludge process thing. So, how much solid present in here which is actually under reaction this if you divide this total mass with the rate at which the solids are being wastage. So, some of the solids which is going out with this root divided by some of uh, plus some of the solid divided by this root. So, if you add these two. So, this what you get is the total amount of solid being wastage in a day and the total amount of solid present in the system. So, for say 100 kg just roughly 100 kg is present in the system over here and you are wasting 2 kg per day from this route and say, uh, say 3 kg per day from the this route. So, that means your total 5 kg per day solids you are wasting. So, if you divide 100 by 5 because total 100 kg and in one day you are wasting 5 kg of the solids. So, that means typically solid is going to retain there for 20 days. So, this becomes the solid retention time which typically refers to the duration for uh, which the solid is going to stay average duration for which the solid is going to stay in there. So, that is what is uh, your uh, solid retention time. There is another term uh, which is MCRT okay, mean cell residence time which is a similar term in fact, okay, but uh, this solid is normally for the total solids present in the system whereas, MCRT or mean cell retention time is for specifically microorganisms. So, they are measured in a similar way the only difference is there in uh, MCRT we do not consider TSS, but we take VSS or MLVSS here MLVSS or VSS. So, instead of like uh, considering the total solids we consider just the mixed liquor volatile suspended solids or the volatile suspended solids which are more uh, more appropriate indicator for the biomass so that gives us the mean cell retention time. There is another term sludge volume index which is the volume in ml occupied by 1 gram of activated sludge after settling in the aerated liquid for 30 minutes. So, this is the standard protocol we allow 1 gram of activated sludge to settle for 30 minutes and see how much volume it is occupying. So, the less volume less uh, means as less the volume it occupies because amount of the sludge is same. So, if, if it occupying less volume that means, it is a compact sludge, it has a good settling characteristic and uh, therefore, it, it is a compact sludge and it is better to have a less sludge volume index. If you are having a high sludge volume index that means, the uh, sludge is not that dense, it is sort of fluffy and it will not have good settling characteristic. So, SVI or sludge volume index is given as milliliter per gram means how much volume it is occupying for 1 gram of sludge. So, this is the settled sludge volume into uh, 1000 into MLSS. So, how much MLSS we have taken and how much vol uh, to how much volume it settled. So, that gives the sludge volume index. If we see the biochemical reactions that takes place in a in an activated sludge process. So, the mechanism for the removal of biodegradable organic matter uh, in this aerobic suspended growth system can be expressed by energy production or respiration equation which we discussed in the earlier. So, organic matter here uh, which is made of C, H, O, N, S primarily. So, this organic matter reacts with the bacteria with the oxygen produces CO2 produces H2O may produce ammonia and generate new cells. Okay. The nitrification could also occur okay, although as we were discussing in the week when we are talking about the natural attenuations. So, nitrification can also take place 
However, it is a delayed process. So, if we have to increase the residence time for nitrification if you want it to be occur, but if it occurs, so the amount of nitrogen present with oxygen, CO2 and bicarbonate and that produces the nitrate uh, in order to like it oxidizes ammonia to nitrate and uh, produces more new cells of the nitrifiers. So, there is a oxygen requirement for nitrification as well, oxygen requirement for carbonaceous BOD removal as well. Okay. The oxi oxidation of protoplasm is again a metabolic activity which breaks down the proto, uh, this uh, protoplasm into elemental constitute, so that cells die. So, this is called endogenous respiration and this endogenous respiration or cell maintenance also uh, takes place and the reaction required for that is this. Okay. So, that is how we basically get uh, these are the common processes that typically takes place in activated sludge system. Now, if you see the how the activated sludge process is designed or model. So, uh, activated sludge process is typically a suspended growth system. Okay, where wastewater aeration is present uh, in the presence of microbial suspension is achieved, solid liquid separation is achieved after aeration, the discharge of the clarified effluent or treated effluent goes out from the secondary clarifier, okay. the excess biomass is wastage and uh, remaining biomass is returned or required biomass is returned to the aeration tank. So, this is the process that takes place for modeling purpose or for designing purpose we take certain assumptions and based on that only we design these systems. So, those assumptions include there has to be a steady state conditions throughout the system. So, that is the first thing we assume because ASP is normally operated in a as a continuous reactor ok, continuous flow reactor and continuous flow reactor. So, we assume that the uh, steady state is throughoutly maintained in all in both the units over here. So, steady state maintained means uh, that the characteristic of influent is not changing with time that becomes another assumption. So, the influent BOD remains constant, steady state condition, condition is assumed throughout the system we consider this aeration tank as a completely mixed system. Okay, so, we do not assume any plug flow kind of thing in aeration tank and we consider that volume whatsoever is the uh, content in the aeration tank that is what is leaving the system and that is why uh, like when we go on doing this mass balance thing we consider that whatsoever is the concentration of substrate or concentration of the biomass it will be the same concentration of sub or substrate and biomass in the outflow as we discussed earlier during our uh, deliberations over the plug flow and continuous systems during the mass balance analysis. So, all reactions takes place only in aeration tank as uh, we were discussing earlier also. So, that is again a very important assumption that all reactions takes place only in aeration tank and secondary clarifier works only for the solid separation it does not take part there is no reaction there is no uh, nothing happens. So, that is why when we compute the volume we primarily compute the volume of aeration tank uh, depending on the reaction kinetics. The biomass concentration in the influent is negligible that is the another uh, assumption which is usually taken that the biomass which is entering the system along with the uh, along with the water is almost negligible and whatsoever biomass available in the system that and the recycled or returned sludge is the one which are actually doing all this uh, like degradation or decomposition process in the aeration tank. They are the one which are involved in this process in the aeration tank and there is no inflow of biomass. For most of the time design purpose even the wastage of the biomass along with the treated effluent means the sludge washout if you say that is also considered nearly 0. So, that is another assumption which is often taken. So, x 0 and x c is often considered as 0 and uh, this thing happens. So, what happens if you quickly see 
this is the amount q0 q or q0 is the amount which is actually coming okay the discharge s0 is the initial substrate concentration or bod initial bod what typically you say and this is the initial biomass which is actually zero now in aeration tank these reactions takes place v is the volume of the tank s is the substrate concentration or bod in the tank and x is the biomass in the tank same leads out uh, and then it goes to the clarifier and from clarifier a part of discharge which is q0 minus qw is actually goes in out whereas the some part of the discharge which is actually qw plus qr comes at, along with the sludge out of this the qw discharge is wastage while qr quantity is recycled now since this qr quantity is recycled so net inflow to the aeration tank becomes q0 plus qr and not just q0 q0 is coming here q0 flow is coming from here and qr flow is coming along with the biomass is coming from this side so total amount which is actually going in the aeration tank is is q0 plus qr and this is since it is a steady state system so this amount which is going that amount will leave the system so what leaves the system is again q0 plus qr of this q0 plus qr uh, q0 minus qw goes here and q0 plus qr goes here so if you sum these two q0 minus qw plus qw plus qr so this gets cancelled and eventually you get q0 plus qr coming and q0 qr plus leaving this system from these two roots so that's how the discharge is maintained maintained then uh, this the biomass and uh, the biomass and substrate which is coming if in the effluent comes to here since there is no reaction taking place so there is no change in the substrate concentration substrate is the one which is in the dissolved state so there is no change in the substrate concentration and the same substrate concentration goes in the effluent as well so this becomes your effluent bod okay, this becomes your effluent bod and uh, the concentration which is get x of biomass which is getting in the system that is getting changed because of the phase separation process so since the biomass is settling so the biomass in the effluent or in the water will be very low which is actually x e biomass in the effluent and as you are saying that it is often considered as zero and the biomass which is settling so that concentration is going to get changed so that becomes x r the biomass concentration in the uh, the solid concentration or the vss in the water which is actually coming out of this sludge channel so the qw plus qr which actually flows out of this has a biomass concentration of xr and the bod concentration here again is s because there is no reaction here so whether the uh, like liquid going towards this way or this way the dissolved bod levels are essentially the same since the dissolved BOD levels are essentially the same, so this S remains here, this S remains here, this S remains here, this S remains here. So soluble BOD remains everywhere same, whereas the biomass concentration will change because E is going into the effluent and XR is the one which is coming down. So this is XR. Now of this uh, flow QW plus QR. QW is wastage, so that will have QW S into XR and uh, QR is recycled, so QR S and XR is the one which is recycled that way. So this is the process description what actually happens in a activated sludge process. So we will end this session here and uh, in uh, next session we will quickly talk about the uh, how it is designed, okay, how the mass balance in a activated sludge process is considered and briefly speak about uh, some of the other uh, aerobic units which are used as a secondary biological treatment. Thank you.